my name is Sarah Ladipo Manika, and I'm very excited to be here at the Ake Festival this year. It's wonderful to be in the company of so many great writers and aspiring writers. So my first novel is a book entitled Independence, and this was published, it feels like many years ago now, but I, I do remember the day that it actually came out in print. You know, as a writer, you spend months, years writing something, so it's a very exciting moment when you actually see your book in its physical form. And that was a wonderful experience. I, I recently published my second book, Like a Mule Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun. And that was in some ways even more exciting because this time I chose to give the world rights to Cassava Republic Press, a Nigerian uh, publisher. And it was just wonderful to be able to do that and to see the good work that they were able to do, great book cover, great uh, publicity, etc. So yeah, it's always very exciting to have something published. Well, I'll talk about Abubakar Adam Ibrahim, who just won uh, the latest uh, big Nigerian prize for Season, Season of Crim Crimson Blossoms. And uh, it's a story of an older woman who falls in love with a younger uh, man. And it's also set in the north. I, I grew up in Jos, and uh, so there are various descriptions of Jos um, that are very sad, um, and it's certainly something that's been on my mind a lot. So I think that book marked me for a number of reasons. One, its story was original, but also the setting and memories of Jos, uh, where I used to live. I think I'm often drawn to stories that I really want to read myself and can't necessarily find. So, for example, the last book that I've written, Like a Mule Bringing Ice Cream to the Sun, is about an older woman, an older Nigerian woman living in San Francisco. And I was really finding that I was wanting to read stories about older women, but not finding them in literature. I was finding stories about older men, and I certainly wasn't finding stories about older African women. So, yeah, a lot of my writing is inspired by stories that I'm wanting to read. I think another aspect of my writing is that I'm always drawn or often drawn to characters that I feel are generally invisible, uh, you know, characters that we may just pass and, and not think much about drivers, maids, you know, uh, so those, those are the things that draw me to stories at the moment. I think I like to think of literature more broadly as storytelling. And storytelling is important in every culture. We tell stories in different ways, through film, through plays, through music, through writing. And it's a way of reminding us of what makes us human. So I think at, at its core, for me, that's what storytelling and as an extension, literature is about. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from a minor character so my main character, as I said, is from Nigeria. She's living in San Francisco. And it's her story, but it's also the story of friends she makes, often very unlikely friends, in San Francisco. So the character that I'm going to read is a character who has a shop in San Francisco. He's from Palestine. And my main character visits him, passes his shop, buys things from him. So yeah, his, and the character's name is Daoud. Assalamu alaikum, beautiful flower for a beautiful woman. I have to say that uh, because I forget her name, which is not good because she never forgets mine and she understands some of my language. But to tell you the truth, once upon a time, this woman must have been stunning. Such a tall woman with a fine ass, even now. And my name is Daouda, uh, not Donald. She was probably even stylish, although now at her age, maybe not so. Amira says the woman is just eccentric, but that's my sister being kind. Amira never says a bad word about anybody, which is why I must be the one to look after my family's business. And this is a headache with this, being shop, with this shop being so close to the hate Ashbury, with all the hippies and the pot smoking lazies and the homeless. But I am not that stupid. You don't take a man like me, uprooted from Yafar, and forced to walk with my family across the desert and expect me to know nothing. No, you cannot fool a man like me. I know what people are like, which is why my sister, she ought to listen when I tell her that a chain of falafel stores is what we should be doing. Listen, I know these things. 
I sense them. We could make it here in San Francisco, just like the French restaurant in the Russian Hill and the Mexican restaurant in the Mission, or the Italian ones all over the place. Why not Palestinian? We could call it Jaffa or Falafel Meister or whatever sounded good to Amira. It would be cheap, good, healthy, even organic, low fat, vegan, raw, paleo, whatever people wanted, we could do it. Cheap, easy, fresh. And once we made it in San Francisco, then to Auckland and then to LA and then to New York, to everywhere. But instead, what does Amira want? Who the hell is going to buy cakes in this neighborhood? Expensive cakes? Forget it. Cheap cakes? Maybe. But expensive cake? No way. Why? Because women in this country is always dieting. And real men, like real men everywhere, they don't eat cake. Falafel, yes, but not cake. Maybe birthday cakes for kids, but then think about it, Amira. One kid would want a train cake, and then another the clown cake. And then another's going to start crying for a cake in the shape of a ballerina. And who's going to want to make those kind of cake? Not Amira. She wants the fancy ones with the honey and the pistachio like back home. But the problem is that American don't like those cake. Too many nuts. Nuts, I keep reminding her. You know, it makes no difference. This is the home of peanut butter. America has a problem with nuts. And America has a problem with other things as well after the election. But let's return to nuts. America have a problem with nuts. And God forbid that someday some kid decides to have an allergic reaction to some of Amira's cakes. Then what? Then the business will be finished. That's what.